Last week, I turned out a vlog that I shot entirely on my iPhone. This week, I'm going to show you how I edited that video. I'm Amanda Horvath and I'm all about helping business owners and entrepreneurs leverage the power of video without breaking the bank or taking up tons of their time. If you are looking to use video marketing in your strategy this year, then consider subscribing and clicking the bell to be notified every time I release a new video. A lot of people might feel that when I say that they should just shoot on their iPhone, it's sort of a cop out because of the back side of it, which is the editing. So yes, you have technology here in your hand that you are able to use and shoot your video, but then how do you edit it? That's what this video is going to be all about. So the first step is to get the files from my phone to my computer. So I'm a big Mac user, so I have an iPhone and I have a Mac computer that is right here in front of me actually. Here, I'll show y'all. That's where we'll be doing the editing. And I just need to send the files to there. So I use AirDrop to do this. So let me show you how I do that right now. So I go to my photos and I'm going to select all of the videos that are related to the vlog, which are all of these guys. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Then I go on my computer, I open up Finder and I click to AirDrop within Finder. If for some reason you don't have that within your Finder, you can go to your Finder preferences and ensure that that is turned on your sidebar. And then you just tap your icon on your phone and it sends to your computer. I'm going to be sending quite a few files to my computer, so let's give it a little bit of time to get over there. So once you've got your files actually on your computer, they're going to show up in your downloads folder. So you're going to want to copy those over to an external hard drive. And the reason that I really recommend doing this is because when you create your project file, if anything ever moves after creating it and importing your files, those files are going to go offline into a new editor that can be really scary. So by copying your files over to an external hard drive, you're going to very easily be able to find them and reconnect them if you need them. So this is the organization structure that I use for all my videos. So I'll put O2 footage, this is video 34, that's what I'm calling it. Um, and then I copied all of my iPhone files from my downloads folder into my external hard drive. Now, once you've done that, you can go ahead and delete the files from your downloads folder so it's not taking up tons of space on your internal hard drive. Then the next thing is to make sure that all the files that came over are indeed all the uh, video files because I know for a fact I did not... Um, I don't need any of these JPEGs, so I'm just gonna go through and delete these JPEGs just to keep it nice and even, nice and clean. All right, awesome. So now we have all that and we're ready to hop into Premiere. So go ahead and open up Premiere. I know a lot of you don't use Premiere Pro. You will be able to apply these same editing techniques with a different software, but if you are going to be creating video content quite often, I highly recommend updating to Premiere Pro. One, because you're gonna be able to steal a lot of the tricks that I use and a lot of the shortcuts that will really ramp up your editing capabilities. So that alone is definitely worth it. But all in all, I love Premiere Pro and highly recommend it. So once you're in Premiere Pro, you're going to click this new project button and then you're gonna choose where to save your project. So if you click this browse button, then we're gonna navigate to the same place that this folder is created. So this is where all of our footage is. I put all the Premiere files into 01 Premiere. Click choose. We're gonna label this video 34. And then I always like to put the date. I think it's the 21st. And that way, if I ever go back into this project file, I can always see what date I left off and then I can create a new one so that it's not, it doesn't ever get lost. None of my work gets lost. All right, so once your Premiere project file is open, then what we're going to do is take this folder and we're actually just gonna drag it into here. It's gonna import those files, so this might take a second. All right, once those files are imported, I always go ahead and rename this 
O2 footage and it matches the structure, how we've organized it within the finder right there. And then I create another folder by and say O1 Premiere. Okay, so the way that I did that, I know I'm going fast, I right clicked and I clicked new bin or you can click Command B to create a new bin as well. And the way, the reason I number them is so that they are organized with one at the top and two at the bottom. So now we have all of our footage in here. So what you're going to do is first start by just dragging a clip over into this area to create a sequence. All right, so there you go. So this created a sequence. This is the icon for sequences right here. And you just go ahead and name this video 34 rough cut one. And we actually move this, I'm sorry, this is supposed to be 01 sequences. So we're gonna, since this is a sequence, we move this up to the sequences. And we're gonna create another one by just clicking duplicate clicking duplicate there and we're going to call this video 34 selects. Awesome. So the reason that we did the drag and drop method is so that your sequence settings will match that of your clip. Okay. So the next step is to go through and watch every single video clip and choose the best sections of each clip. A lot of people, they are hesitant to do this because they think it's going to take up a lot of their time. And it's true. It does take a ton of time, but it is worth it. And if you don't do that, you're not going to be able to find those golden clips. So I highly recommend going through and watching everything. It's going to make your job a lot easier in the next stage of editing as well. So that's what we're going to go do right now. And I'm going to show you how I choose the best parts of each clip and where, how I organize them within Premiere. So I just recorded this whole bit about how I start editing and it didn't record. So instead of going back and erasing all the work that I just did, I'm going to pick up with you guys where I left off and explain that once again. I left off at this video here. So what you can see, I'll show you this one. So you can see I had like a blooper right here, right? So what I did was I'll just put in, you're going to use the I and O on your keyboard. That's your in and out points on your keyboard. So the that will put, if I click I, you can see it creates this right here. And if I click O, it creates an out point right there. That means that if I was to drag this clip into here, it's only going to drag this portion of the file. So you can see that is that portion of the file. If I clear my in and out points, it'll drag the whole file. So you just put your in and out points where you want them. And then I just drag this into the bloopers folder bloopers uh, sequence and then you just keep watching the clip okay so that's like I was thinking about what I was going to say and then here I actually say it so I put an I at the start all right so that's the end right there all the way to the end of the clip and then I click O and then I just drag that down into here. All right, so we'll do one more clip together so that you guys can see one more time how I do this and then I'm gonna go through and choose all the selects on my own so you're not watching paint dry. All right, so here we go. Nope, mistake. All right, so we could add that back to the bloopers as well. So I put my in and out point and now I'm dropping it down into the sequence using comma. So if you don't have any of the keyboard shortcuts that I am talking about, then what you can do is just go to Premiere Pro, you can go to keyboard shortcuts and you can look for any of them here. Like for example, marker or add marker, it's set to M. If you don't have that, then you can reset it to M. All right, so that is take one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a marker to my timeline and I do that by clicking M on the keyboard and then I just say tip two because this is really my second tip and then I click 
I have my in and out points and I can drag that into the sequence. Okay, so I wasn't totally confident about that take and so I did it again. So it's a good practice to have multiple takes of the same thing instead of just doing it once uh, so that you can choose whichever one is better when you get into post. So we're gonna choose both of those there. Then I'll mark my favorite clip by just dragging it up to the second line. So for the next section, I actually ended up shooting some B-roll clips. So now I'm going to show you how to choose B-roll selects because that's a little bit different than the talking portion. So this section, you can see the orientation is messed up, but I'll show you how to fix that shortly. So if you're scrubbing or we play this, I show my toys that I got from the studio and then I'm walking down the path. So I can, and then I do a transition there. So I just did an in-camera transition where I just swipe off the screen. All right, so we'll put an out point once I swipe. We'll put an in point as I, you see my feet coming in. So that's, I'm just choosing which section of it I wanna put down here. And then we'll add this section here. We'll call, we'll add a marker for B-roll. Usually a, video project is going to have a lot of b-roll clips not just um, a few this one really only has a few otherwise i would create an entirely different sequence so once again you could just duplicate one of these guys and create a new sequence and call that b-roll for this purpose i'm just going to add it straight into my selects timeline because there's not that much b-roll so drag that down okay so since this orientation is messed up, what you'll do is we just click that, we go up here, we click effects control, and we're just going to rotate this 90 degrees. Actually, that is upside down. So let's go negative 90 degrees. And now the orientation is accurate. So there you go. All right, cool. Sometimes the iPhone does that. I don't know why. All right, so which clip are we on? already watched all these cool so then I did a transition um, a swipe transition to show target so I'll keep that and then a swipe transition out and then as I'm walking into target I did a swipe transition in so put an in point and a swipe transition out and drop that into the sequence, moving on. Swipe transition in. I didn't do one out there. Well, that wasn't good, Amanda. Oh, you know what? Actually, I was thinking ahead. So I did a swipe transition in, but then right afterwards, I did a time lapse walking through the store until I found what I was looking for. So that's really all of that is a select. So we'll just put that in there. That does not have audio. You can see audio is below this line here. And so that doesn't have audio. And then I did another one with a cart because I had to go back and get a cart. <laughs> and it was blurry because it was shaking. The cart was shaking, but it kind of kind of looks cool, I guess. I don't know. We'll see if we use it or not. Okay. All right, so then I found my desk and I was all excited about it, right? So I could take just this part. So I'm cutting out all this extra until I point to it. So swipe over like that. So I'll drag that down and let's see how I continue it. So I punch in on it go closer to it, and then swipe out. So I could keep all of this. Um, during this section, I don't like to do much editing when I'm choosing selects. I like to take all the best possible clips um, from my video. That allows me to do the most creativity. I have the most creative work when I'm actually going through and assembling the rough cut. So I put it all into the sequence and moving on. Okay, so you get the idea. I don't wanna make you watch all of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and break down the rest of the clips and I will see you once I've done that. 
All right, so I've gone through and broken everything down so you can see all my markers and all the different areas, um, all the different selects that I've made. So now what we'll do is I have assembled a little bit of this, but we're going to go through and choose the selects to put into this sequence, which will eventually be my rough cut sequence. So I left off with this clip here, which is this clip right here. So now everything is sequential since it's a vlog. So that makes vlogging really easy because all you have to do is just move forward within your selects. And so now there's a section where I actually go shopping. For now, I'm just going to let that be because I am going to get to that section when I actually put my music into the timeline and I'm going to edit to the music. So just to speed things up, I'm going to skip that for now and move on and get all the talking portions into the video before doing any B-roll. All right, so you can see this one. I dragged up to the second line, which means it was my favorite take. Let's just watch it and make sure. Yeah, that one is good. So we just copy that and I'm going to add a little gap here, paste that. And we're going to add a marker here that says add store B-roll here. And we're going to keep moving forward. All right, so then I talk about how it's going to be fun to carry that in. And then you see me carrying that in and then you see me unloading it, loading it in my room. So we're just going to copy all that over. So I'm going to finish assembling, looking at all of these clips and assembling them in order of the rough cut. And then we'll kind of talk through how I'm going to go through and cut out portions that aren't interesting and really tighten it up. So I'll see you then. All right, so I've assembled all of my clips into my rough cut sequence in the order that they should be. Basically, I looked at all the different takes and chose the best ones and threw them into this sequence. Now, the sequence is eight minutes and 30 seconds. That seems quite long. My videos typically are more around five minutes. That might not be a problem if it is actually engaging, but I have a feeling there's a lot of stuff in here that we can cut out. Our next step is going to be adding music. So that's going to help us pace the video and ensure that things are staying really fast and engaging. So the way that you're going to do that is you're actually going to create a new bin. So remember, you just right click, say new bin, and then we're going to name that 03 music. And I've already gone ahead and chose chosen a couple of music clips that I am going to pull in here. So music, this is round two. So I'm going to pull these in and just drag and drop in there. And when you select these, they come up here with a preview. If you need access to music, I have a video all about the different sites that I use for finding music. So definitely go check that out. All right, so I chose a couple of music clips that I like. Now we are going to go through and really tighten up these um, edits and we're actually going to be adding in my transitions. So as you've seen my videos, there's transitions between things and I'm gonna show you how I add those right now. So we're going to create another bin. It's going to be called 04 graphics. By now you're kind of seeing how this organization thing works. And we're going to navigate to where I keep those graphics. YouTube elements, AH graphics. And we're going to take these guys and just drag and drop into there. Bam. All right, so I always, so I can lock this track so that when I shift all of this over, and I did that by, um, you can do, I guess, what is the shortcut here? It's this, track forward select, or you can just do command A, is, or shift A is my shortcut to move everything over here. So right after I intro the video topic, I have a transition. So this is just transition one. So we'll zoom in here a little bit. And I just kind of put it towards the end of that clip. It comes on and then it goes to the next clip. So I just want to make sure I'm not cutting off anything that I'm saying. For you. 
perfect. All right, and then we'll get this section. We'll drag this a little bit under here. Before we dive in for- Perfect. Before we dive- I always want the transition to go off. Oh no, there's a black. So you can see there's black. I need to move this up a little bit more so you're not seeing any black on either side. Perfect. Okay. Right when the transition goes off, I always want to time that to where I'm starting to talk right then and there. That keeps it really engaging and quick. All right, we're losing light here. So I'm going to try to wrap this video up really quickly because I've been going into a lot of detail with you guys. But if you like videos like this, definitely let me know and I can expand even further on future videos. So now I'm going to show you how to create jump cuts to be able to keep up the pace in your editing. All right, so we'll go in here. There's a couple that I want to add in here because this, this section kind of lags a little bit. And whenever your video lags, it you're going to lose audience retention. So you want to keep it really quick and choppy. And so we're going to do that by adding some jump cuts in here. This area of my room. So I, right now, I don't have a home desk. All right, so now this next section I kind of ramble, so I'm gonna let you hear it and then I'm gonna take it out. And that can be a little bit frustrating if I just wanna knock out a couple of things on a Saturday morning or a Sunday. So I'm looking to really- So not really relevant for this video, we can cut it out. That's gonna take out um, some time off of our video and keep it more engaging and quick. Boom. So I, right now, I don't have a home desk. So I'm looking to really transform this area. All right, transform this area. Wonder if we can cut there. Get a little desk, a little seating area. Maybe I mount my TV or do something and just kind of clean this area up to really bring the room together. So let's go do that. So what do I Okay, so. Form this area, get a little desk, a little seating area. Maybe, maybe I mount my TV or do something and just kind of clean this area. Okay, so I'm gonna cut out the clean this area up and just kind of clean this area up It's really just filler. I didn't know what I was saying So I just kind of ad-libbed and so in editing you can really go in and cut that stuff out So let's watch it now that we've cut that out I have a home desk So I'm looking to really transform this area get a little desk Okay, so we're gonna get add a little jump cut here, even though we don't need to add a jump cut, sometimes I like to add it to once again, keep that pace up. So we're gonna add another cut there. A home desk. So I'm looking to really transform this area, get a little desk, a little seating area. And maybe we add another little jump cut here. So. Area, get a little desk, a little seating area. Maybe I mount my TV or do something to really Bring the room. something. Whoops. All right, so there's this little gap here we're going to cut out as well. Oops. There we go. Something to really bring. And then there's this kind of gap right here where I'm blinking, and that is a gap that also can be cut out, so we're going to chop that out as well. Bam. So now it's going to be real choppy, but it's going to be quick. And in my YouTube videos where I'm actually teaching something, I like to hide the edits. But for vlog style, I actually really like the jump cut look. So I, I use it as much as possible. I think it's fun. My room. So I, right now, I don't have a home desk. So I'm looking to really transform this area, get a little desk, a little seating area. Maybe I mount my TV or do something to really bring the room together. So let's go do that. So one of my big... So yeah, that definitely speeds it up. There's a little bit here that I chopped a little bit too much. So we're going to extend that. To really... So... Then to really bring the room together. So let's go do that. Okay, so I'm gonna add one as well to the, so let's go do that. Bring the room together. So let's go do that. All right, so right after that section, I also want to have another intro or another transition where it swipes and now we're in a new location. So I'm gonna add that right now. And this is actually gonna be the third transition that we're adding because I'm gonna add another one. 
before this. But just for the sake of time, I'm not showing you guys everything. Yeah. All right, so this is a down arrow swipe. I actually want it to go from left to right instead of going down. I like to go down if I'm adding graphics up on the screen, but I, I like to swipe this way if we're transitioning to a different location. So I'll actually go into the effects and I'm gonna rotate this by typing 90 degrees, negative 90 degrees, and I'll just scale that up a little bit. Bam! So that now the swipe is happening from left to right. And there you go, just a little trick for you, a little bonus. Go do that. All right, so go do that. Swipes off and go to the place where we see black. We drag that clip underneath. And then I'm talking. Do that. So one of my biggest tips for Perfect. All right, so there you go. I'm going to have to go through and do this for a lot of it. You can see why editing takes so long, but hopefully you picked up a couple of tips along the way that really spoke to you and helped advance your editing skills. Hold up, so I totally forgot to show you guys how to export. I'm actually in the middle of editing the video right now on how to edit, and so I wanted to go in here and show you guys how to do that. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna move your playhead, this is called your playhead, to the end of your sequence, your edited sequence, and you're going to hit O. And that's going to create an out point on the end of your video. Just a small note is that if you have like a fade at the very end of your clip, sometimes I like to kind of extend out my out point a little bit, because there's been a couple of times where I'll be, um, I'll have exported and a long video had just exported and it kind of looks like this to where at the very end it didn't totally fade out. So I like to add a, just a little bit of a gap there. All right, so this one doesn't need to fade out at the end. So once you've done that, then you're just going to go into File, Export, Media. That will pop up this dialog here. From this drop down, you're going to choose H264 format. That is the best format for the web, which I assume you are exporting this for the web. And then there's a ton of options in here. I personally go with the Vimeo 1080p Full HD option. Um, you can choose some of these other ones, like if you're going to Facebook, you can do that. I just find, for whatever reason, this is the one I've settled on, even though I export to YouTube. If you click this, then this is where you're going to be able to save your project file. So we would want to save it to the same folder um, that we've been using. So this is the same folder that we've been using. I just renamed it since starting this video. <laughs> so you can name it whatever. I just keep it the same as the sequence name and you put it in there in your 05 exports folder. And then all of this should be set properly because of your how you chose this setting here. But what I do like to do is check this box, use maximum render quality and then also I drop this down and select to pass. This um, is going to work a little bit extra hard to export um, because it's gonna go through and render your video twice instead of rendering it once. Uh, it usually translates to quicker playback, or at least that's what I've heard. So this is optional, but I do that. And then you can either hit Q or export. If you hit Q, it's going to open up your um, media encoder here. So it's going to add your video to the queue here and all you have to do is click this play button and it will begin to render out. And what's great about media encoder is that it allows you to continue editing um, while you are exporting. So I always use the Q option instead of the export. If you like this video, be sure to drop a comment below because I'm not totally sure how it worked out and I'm curious if it was helpful. Otherwise, be sure to check out some of my other videos and I will see you in the next one.